Spare Room with Karen Terry. Hey y'all and welcome to Spare Room. I'm Karen Terry and today we're going to talk about playing mentors. When I say mentor character, what I'm talking about is any character that is going to be in a teaching or a training role. So this could be a teacher in a school role play, this could be a coach in a sports role play, or it could even be a manager of a store in a town role play. Basically any character that is going to have the need to teach another character some task. Lots of role players struggle with these types of characters and threads because for better or for worse, the mentor character is in the active role and the student character is in the passive role. So what that means is for the person playing the mentor, when you go to do your reply, there might not be very much to respond to. So if you're playing the mentor character, how do you make this work? The first thing to do is during the character creation stage. If you're playing a character that is going to be put into a teaching or a mentor role, at the character creation stage, you need to decide how they feel about this. How did they get into teaching? Did they always want to do that? Why or why not? The answers to these questions are going to drive how your character acts in those threads. If they have a real passion for teaching and want to see the mentee character succeed, then those threads are going to overall be positive. If they are more of a reluctant teacher, for example, they're teaching because they couldn't succeed in the craft itself, then the thread's going to overall be a bit more negative. If they're a reluctant teacher who maybe, for example, is teaching because they couldn't succeed at the craft itself, then they're going to be less than kind to their mentee. And if they are a reluctant teacher, why do they keep teaching? There must be some reason they didn't quit, and that should factor into your characterization. It's also good to consider how long they've been teaching. How much do they know about the topic that they're teaching? Do they remember what it was like to not know? The answers to these questions are going to help you figure out how patient the teacher is going to be with their mentee. Asking yourself all of these types of questions is going to help you figure out the characterization for your mentor character, and it's going to make it much easier to do those threads where you have to be in that more active role. Asking yourself these types of questions is going to help you figure out your character's goals and motivations and make them feel like a real mentor. Once you understand your character's goals and motivations, the next step is the research stage. So I'm going to link up in the card my video that talks about role-playing characters with skills that you don't have. That covers the basics for these sorts of things, but in this video we're going to cover exactly how that applies to mentor characters. You'll need to first research teaching techniques. There is a plethora of information on teaching techniques on the internet, so I would recommend getting tucked into those and doing a little bit of research because your character is going to know this stuff, so you'll need at least a surface level knowledge of the teaching techniques that are out there. So, for example, look into how to write learning objectives, look into the Kirkpatrick model, look into Bob Pike. These are things that relate to teaching that your character would know about. Now, I'm not saying you need to do a deep dive and understand like the entire Bob Pike method or things like that, but you need at least a surface level understanding of these things. There's a lot of research and work that goes into teaching someone something. Teaching someone a task may seem natural and obvious. But skipping this step in your research is going to make it really hard for you to take on that active role as the mentor character. You also need a high-level understanding of the subject your character is teaching. If your character is leading a bunch of soldiers, you'll need some military knowledge. If your teacher character is a dance instructor, you'll need to know something about dance techniques. If your teacher is a professor at a magical school, then you're going to need to know the ins and outs of the magic system in that particular role play. Whatever your character is teaching, remember they are the expert on it. So what that means is you need to know enough about the topic to know when you don't know and need to Google before finishing your reply. You can make this easier on yourself by making your character a teacher of something that you already know a lot about in your real life. If you do this though, don't fall for the Dunning-Kruger effect. What I mean by that is picking something that you think you know a lot about and so that causes you to skip the research step entirely. You'll still need to research so that the topic is fresh in your mind and you don't fall into that trap. Okay, so you've got your character's motivation, you've done your research, now it's time to actually write that mentor-mentee thread. What do you do? 
Unlike most scenes where it's two characters really playing off of each other, there's only so much the mentee character can actually do in these scenes. It's up to the mentor or teacher character to lead the way. If your writing doesn't convey the skill or the task that the student is supposed to be doing, then they're not going to have anything to write in their replies. So it's on the mentor character to drive the action, convey the information, and tell the student what to do. If the student character you're playing against seems too passive, ask yourself, has the mentor character been active enough? It's possible the other mun is still waiting for your character to actually do the teaching. In the real world, this skill is called classroom control. What that means is when the teacher gets up in front of the class, the students pay attention, they listen, they follow directions, and learning begins to take place. Your character must have some sort of classroom control. So when writing your replies, don't just react, lead. Think of it this way. If the mun of the student character is learning a little something about the topic through the role play, you're doing it right. Does this put a lot on the person playing the mentor character? Yes, it does. Playing a mentor isn't for everyone. Just like we talked about in my role playing villains video, playing this type of character takes a certain amount of effort. And just like villains, your first mentor might suck, but keep trying and keep practicing and you'll be able to play this type of character just like any other. Do you like to play mentor characters? If so, let me know your tips and struggles in the comments down below. Thank you so, so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell, whatever engagement features YouTube adds in the future, do it all. What you're seeing on screen right now are the names of all of my $5 and up patrons. Thank you guys so much for supporting my channel. If you'd like to be included or get other fun perks, link to my Patreon in the description down below. And as always, don't forget to make it a great day.